Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2022 Chevrolet Traverse, we're gonna be showing you how to install the Kurt trailer hitch receiver. Before we jump into that though, why don't we just take a minute, check this out and make sure it's gonna work for you. One of the really cool things about this setup is the fact that it'll hide behind this access panel whenever you're not using it. And it'll look completely factory, you know, you won't even be able to tell the hitch is there. Uh, when you're ready to use it though, this panel will come off. Pop that out of place. Then you're gonna have full access to it. And that kind of brings me to my next point. And this might sound kind of silly, but we do see it more often than you think. You know, not a bad idea before you even pick a hitch out to go out to your vehicle, pop this off and check. Cause sometimes, um, you know, the factory will equip the trailer hitch back here as well. So just wanted to point that out. All of the other hitches available for the Traverse can also sit behind the panel. So, you know, this one being able to do that isn't really a separating feature of it. Uh, which brings me to my next point, kind of just comparing all the hitches, right? And there's there's not a whole lot of differences, to be honest with you. They're all going to look very similar, have the same capacities, and, and be all, you know, just as capable uh, as the next. However, there is an e-trailer one that has more of a matte black finish. I think it blends in a little bit better with the panel off, but just a small detail and, and one that doesn't really make it a game changer by any means. This is gonna be a class three hitch, so it has the two inch by two inch opening. Extremely common size, a ton of different things are gonna work with it. It is going to use the standard 5 8 pin and clip. Keep in mind though, one doesn't come with the hitch. If you need one, not a big deal, you can grab it here at e-trailer. A lot of times too, if you end up buying a new accessory, let's just say like a bike rack, for example, they'll usually come with one. So just something to think about if, if that's what you uh, plan on doing. The safety chain openings are going to be a loop style and give us more than enough room to use pretty much any size hook that our trailer might have on it. When it comes to the weight capacities, this is going to have some pretty high numbers. Maximum gross tongue weight rating is going to be 750 pounds, which is going to be the amount of weight pushing down on the hitch. So that's a high number. You'll be able to use any size bike rack or cargo carrier that you want to, for example. As far as the maximum gross trailer weight rating goes, that's going to be 5,000 pounds. That's going to be the amount of weight pulling on the hitch. So that's how much your trailer weighs, plus anything you might have in or on it. Um, this can be used with the weight distribution system, which is a separate component. And what happens whenever you use it is it's going to keep your Chevy and your trailer level whenever you're pulling it down the road. Um, and that, that's really popular on some larger campers and things like that. So check that out if, if that interests you. With that said, though, the capacities are going to remain the same if you were to use that. Uh, with that in mind, I do always like to suggest it's never a bad idea just to grab your Traverse's owner's manual. That way you can check in there and make sure your Chevy can handle that much weight safely. If you are going to be doing some towing, um, you're going to want some trailer wiring. That way all the lighting functions on your trailer will work. And there's a couple different types. Here we actually have the Tecancha 7-way installed on uh, our vehicle. I like Tecancha wiring. I uh, had really a luck with them. And there's also four-way flat wiring available as well. So depending on what you're pulling, you can always grab that stuff right here at each trailer. Now I'll give you a couple of measurements and you can use these to help figure out what type of hitch mounted accessories will work best. From the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening, that's gonna be about 20 and a half inches. So if you plan on pulling a trailer, chances are pretty good. You can get a ball mount that has a drop in the shank. Probably that four to two inch range will work for a lot of people. As far as the bumper clearance goes from the center of the hitch pin hole to the edge of the bumper, that's gonna be about three and a half inches, which is really good. But you can use that to help figure out that if any folding accessories you might have can be stored in that upright position without hitting the back of your traverse. Other than that though, you know, a hitch you really can't go wrong with. Um, it can be completely hidden when you're not using it and it's strong, you can do a lot of different things with it. As far as the installation goes, you are going to have to remove your rear fascia. Don't really let that intimidate you though. Um, it's really not bad. There's only a handful of fasteners. Everything's pretty easy to get to. And it's something you're only going to have to do one time, right? So as long as you stay focused, you're not really run into too many issues. Uh, with that said though, why don't we go ahead and get started on it now. To begin our installation, we're going to be here at the back of our traverse and we're going to get our rear fascia removed, so start by opening up the hatch and that'll give us access to a few fasteners here. 
Just below our tail lights, we're gonna have two plastic covers. And you can get a small flat head and pop them open. That'll expose a screw. You take a seven millimeter, pull that out. Same thing with this one. And then, further down here, we're gonna have another fastener. We'll switch out to a T15 Torx bit and pull that out. And I wanna mention, from this point on, anything we do to one side of the vehicle, we'll do to the other side, because it'll be set up the same way. Moving to your wheel well now, along the back edge, there's gonna be four fasteners that run up, and we need to get those removed. So we'll use a T15. get all of these pulled out. So what I did now is just took some painter's tape and put it along these seams uh, where we're gonna be working. That way we don't accidentally scratch the paint or anything. But with that said, this plastic wheel well trim piece, we're gonna have to pop that off till about, you know, a little less than halfway around. So what you can do is take a plastic trim tool, kind of get in behind there, and you're just gonna kind of pry it off. There's some clips in here that you can push and pop them out. Just work your way up. Which gets about there. What I like to do is take a paper towel or something and kind of hold it in there and that'll expose a fastener here that we need to pull out. That's gonna have a seven millimeter head on it. Underneath of our vehicle, along the back bottom edge, we're gonna have one fastener on each side, and we'll pull those out using a T15 Torx bit. At this point we can start to actually remove our fascia and what I like to do is just kind of grab it and work it, kind of loosen it up. And what I found that helps too, because these are just plastic clips inside of here, uh, I'll shoot some soapy water in there. It seems to help kind of lubricate things and make it easier. But I'm going to start at the corner and there will be some tabs, like that one just popped off, but sometimes you'll have to come in with a real small flat head or trim tool kind of push down on it to get them to release. Just take your time. I'm doing the same thing over here and I have a, a friend over on the other side helping me, which I definitely recommend, makes it much more manageable. But once you pop them free, uh, it'll start to come off and in our case, we have an electrical connector over here on the driver's side. We'll disconnect that. So you can push up on that red tab and then down on that center and get them disconnected. That looks like everything. So with the fascia completely free, we'll go ahead and set it off to the side. The hardware for a hitch is going to share the same uh, mounting locations that is helping to hold up our exhaust. So what we're gonna do is support the exhaust that way when we remove those bolts, it don't come dropping down. So I'm just taking a strap, just running it from side to side, and that should keep everything in place and more controlled. We're gonna have four pieces of hardware that we need to remove. So these two down here. I'm using a 15 millimeter socket for all of them. You can see that exhaust kind of drop, that's why we put the strap on it. And then these two up here. And I already did the other side, and what I suggest doing 
is just leaving one of the nuts on hand tight. That way this will kind of be supported and it don't accidentally fall off. So get that last one off and we can go ahead and pull this out of the way and we will not be reinstalling it. Before we get our hitch up, I just want to talk about how it's going to work because it can be a little tricky to see. So these pieces will slide into our frame rail and there's going to be some holes already drilled into the frame from the factory and these will line up with it. And what you're going to do, eventually you'll take a pull wire from the bottom of the vehicle up, it'll feed through that hole and then we'll have a round hole in the front. You'll push that through like that and you'll put on a spacer block and a carriage bolt. You'll kind of feed that stuff through there. And when you pull down on it, it'll drop down through the hitch and through our frame. Then we can get a nut and a bolt on it. So just wanted to kind of give you a visual there uh, before, we, before we can't really see too much. We'll go ahead and grab our hitch and this will slide into the frame rails. Push it into position. Then for now, just gonna take the nuts that we removed, the factory ones, and just put these on uh, hand tight. Here's a look at the bottom of our frame, and I got this hardware started already. Leave this one together. Sometimes these holes won't line up perfectly. Um, and if that's your case, you can come in with a bit like this or a regular drill bit or a file and kind of straighten it out to give you a little better shot at it there. But like we talked about, I'm gonna take the coiled end of our pull wire, run it up through that opening, then out of the opening in our hitch, thread on our hardware. Get fed through. And once it drops down, can remove the pull wire. What you're gonna do is take a conical tooth washer, make sure the teeth on the washer are gonna face up. Slide that over the bolt. And then I like to apply a little side pressure to washer to keep the bolt steady. That way when you take your nut, it'll be a little bit easier to get started. So what we can do now is leave the exhaust hanging and take your new bolts here and the conical tooth washers and put these in the bottom. And then we're gonna snug up all these here on the face of our hitch. So 11 16th size for these. We'll come up with a three quarter inch and snug up these bolts. At this point, we'll come back with a torque wrench and torque down the hardware um, that's on the bottom of our frame rail. So just those two carriage bolts. And you can find that torque spec in your instructions. With the frame rail bolts torqued, what we're going to do now is remove these two here on the bottom. And the whole reason we even did that to begin with is to draw everything flat. And if you were to put the exhaust up and put them bolts in first, it's pretty much impossible to come back and torque these down and get them completely tight. So that was uh, our reasoning behind that in case you're wondering, but now pretty straightforward. We'll just run our new bolts through the Exhaust hanger. With these, you want the conical teeth facing towards the hitch as well. Get them started again and snug them back down. And finally, we'll come back and torque down all of our remaining hardware to the amount specified. At this point, uh, I want to point out this would be a great opportunity to install trailer wiring uh, if you pick some up. I said because the connector plug is located right here, so super easy to get to, 
everything's out in the open. Um, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So once I ha have this done, we'll come back and uh, pick up from there and get everything back together. So I got our trailer wiring all sorted and now we can get the fascia back on. Don't forget to plug in any electrical connectors that you may have disconnected. So this is literally just gonna line back up and snap back into place. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Kurt trailer hitch receiver on our 2022 Chevy Traverse.